All right, hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Archihex video. There are so many softwares out there. It can be daunting in the beginning and you might not know where to start. Hopefully this video will give you a good idea of what professional and academic landscape looks like. And before I begin, I need to let you know that these are purely based on my limited personal experience. So hopefully that might explain some differences. Before we dive really into any of these, I think it's good to understand what the architectural process looks like. In simple terms, they can be broken down into four phases. First is SD, schematic design, then DD, the design development, construction documentation, and then construction administration. Companies need help in all phases, but in most companies, um, schematic and design development phase only takes up 10 to 25% of the actual time and budget that's spent on the project. And the re remaining 75 to 90% is actually spent on working on CD and construction admin. So if we look at the programs that are used for each phase, this explains why there's such high demand on BIM. But I think it's important for those who are starting out to take a step back and take a slightly critical look because the program that you decide to learn right now will dictate the kind of work that you end up doing. So if you know schematic design and design development is what gets you excited, then you might want to reconsider putting Revit or other software as like your first priority, but perhaps you could spend more time learning other softwares because if you prove that you're competent in design softwares, then they'll end up having you do it, all, even though the amount of time spent on is a lot smaller. So moving on to the main topic, let's talk about BIM. So there are three main players amongst others in the scene right now. And, and as you can imagine, each of them comes with its own pros and cons. Um, Revit, for example, has the most number of users. So building information modeling has become a viral, a vital part of architectural design. And there are only a few softwares to learn. And that is because the building information modeling allows architects to share the model with other consultants, such as MEP, engineering, structures, and all sorts of other consultants that are involved in the project. And in order for that collaboration to happen, everyone needs to be using the same software. Otherwise, the, one of the biggest selling point of BIM is not there anymore. And I think that is why um, I recommend students who are going into the job to learn Revit. That is because they have the most number of users. Collaboration is one of the most important parts of BIM. Majority will only become bigger as we go on. And those who are using um, less common software will end up having to convert. So if you have the choice, I think it would be great to start with Revit. But as mentioned before, maybe depending on the region, if your whole team and your all your consultants are using the other one, then of course you have to get it used to the other one. But overall, the concept remains the same for all, all three of them. So I think it is good practice to start with one and then perhaps think about moving to the other one. As for design, there are three softwares that I've been looking at. Um, first is Rhino, which allows for advanced modeling and parametric design. And SketchUp, one of its strong points is that it has pretty intuitive draw, push and pull interface. And most of all, I think their 3D warehouse is a great platform on which people share their softwares and this can save you a lot of work. And 3ds Max, it's a program that is written in closer to the computer language which allows a program to be a lot more efficient. And that is why it is able to handle like big simulations involving like forest, rain, and all kinds of grass, all kinds of other stuff. And that is why it's most often used for rendering. So to summarize, one should ask oneself, what do I really want to do? This is what I've found so far. So most architectural designers use Rhino to design their projects. And they do use SketchUp sometimes, but very, very rarely, only because they were trained to use, they were never trained to use Rhino. But other times, like 90% of the companies that I've been to, we used Rhino to design, and then it was transferred over to Revit afterwards. But 
SketchUp was used almost always for interior teams. So if you're proficient at SketchUp or if you want to become a part of the interior design, then learning SketchUp could be very essential. And as mentioned earlier, 3D Max allows for heavy simulations and big files, and that is ideal for rendering. And their high quality assets are mostly found in 3D Max file, and that is why it is most optimized for rendering at this point. And as for the rendering softwares, here's a little matrix that I've came up. I've tried using all three of them, and they all have their strengths and weaknesses. V-Ray allows for a very high level of customization, but they have limited set of presets and high learning curve. Inkscape, on the other hand, actually has extremely easy learning curve and has a decent library, but customization is also very low. Inkscape is one of the newer render engines that allows programs like Revit and Rhino, SketchUp to um, render their model in real time. So it's often used in VR, but the quality is actually quite nice. It has become integral part of client presentations, walkthroughs, and even internal studies. So Inkscape has, and it actually has like almost little next to no learning curve. So you might not even have to spend any time on it. So maybe it doesn't even deserve to be on the list. And for Lumion, I think the biggest strength of Lumion is that they have an excellent asset library. That on its own makes Lumion extremely attractive. But secondly, they, they have actually a pretty decent level of customization. So you can achieve visual styles ranging from like really simple rendering to photorealistic. And I've seen some really impressive results from Lumion. So I might recommend that. So in conclusion, which software should you learn? Well, my answer is that it depends on you. As mentioned earlier, different tasks require different softwares and it is impossible for one to learn everything. So I think it is important for one to start from where they have the most interest and start expanding from there on. And with that being said, here are my very subjective recommendation. So for architectural design firms, so these are the firms that spend more time in schematic and design development, and they would like to go really deep into how materials look and how every detail is worked out. And that is why V-Ray's um, custom render capability is required and Rhino's advanced modeling technique is also required here. So the number one priority for design firms would be to learn Rhino and V-Ray. And then second would be learning the Adobe Photoshop and other softwares. And then last but not least, BIM, so that you can transition over to different phases. And for bigger companies, I think I would recommend learning BIM first, because that is where they spend up to 90% of the project time. And for quick studies, either SketchUp or Rhino combined with Inkscape will suffice. And there will be some Photoshop jobs here and there, but nothing too elaborate is to be expected. And for if you're interested in leaning more towards interior design, I highly recommend you learn SketchUp and some other render software such as Lumion, Inkscape, or V-Ray. I think all of them are fine. And but actually, those bigger priority might be learning how to use Photoshop and InDesign for quick presentation or material board or a mood board setup. And for rendering, if you're interested in rendering, 3D Max is recommended but not required because render process usually involves main softwares exporting their files into a common format such as FBX or OBJ, which can be imported into any kind of 3D software such as Blender or Cinema 4D. As from an uh, interview from MIR, the top render company, they say that they respect each artist's program choices because in the end, the product is a flat JPEG image. And as long as you can produce that through whatever means, it doesn't really matter which software that you use. And if you decide to take this path, potentially extremely lucrative and rewarding career could be ahead of you. As mentioned earlier, these recommendations are totally based on my personal experience. And I believe um, architects around the world have different preferences. Please let me know what programs you use with your location, and maybe we can help the next person out. 
that is about it and signing out. Peace.